All right, Mike, uh, we got Tom and, and Tom and John here. You know, of course, Tom has uh, three titles, Rookie of the Year, Player of the Year, out on this tour. John Murkowski looking for his first win. Um, how would you handicap this championship match in a best-of-three scenario here? Well, you've really got a lot of things going on here. You've got a battle reactive resin versus urethane, right? So if both guys hit the pocket every single shot, you almost want to give the advantage to Rakowski, right, just because the extra hitting power of the reactive resin. But with what Tom Hess has averaged and what he's been able to do with his pitch black the last four or five games, he's averaging over 250. I mean, he's absolutely been on fire. He's got a little chip on his shoulder. So I would give the advantage to Hess here. But the left lane is going to be the key, and we saw it the other <laughs> night, is whether or not this left lane is going to play tighter, which could hurt the urethane bowler in Hess. Well, and I I, I think Tommy knows that the left lane is tighter, and we told John. But – you know, it was tighter yesterday when we were playing farther out. And both of them are going to be playing around 10. Unless they absolutely lose it at the bottom of the swing off their hand and miss right, they might not see that uh, hang that we seen yesterday. Hey, now, Rakowski, he's won the, uh, the TAT twice, the True Amateur Challenge. So we kind of nicknamed him Johnny, Tat, Johnny Tat Tat. Uh, but he's, he's no stranger to win. So... And he, he's got such a demeanor about him as far as being cool, calm, and collected. You wouldn't know if he had 100 strikes or 100 opens. He just never reacts. Yeah, the only player that I know of that has won the True Amateur Tournament twice, and he has never won a regional, but he has not competed in many pro events over the years. No, the, John decided uh, that he was going to come out this year. He's going to give it a year and uh, see how he did. If he didn't do well, he, at least he said he could. he done it and give it a shot, but uh, so far he's been doing really, really well. Yeah, 57th at the Senior Masters, 10th at the Senior U.S. Open, 28th at the South Shore Classic, and 35th at the Bauer Championship so far this year. And he did make the step ladders last year, as I mentioned, uh, in his first event in Florida and lost to Walter Ray shooting 267 to Walter's 269. So it's not like he lost that match. He, no. He bowled good. He just got beat by two. Quick, quick rundown of Tom Hess's scores today, though. 10.51 is last four. 262.75 average. For a seven games today, he's averaging 250.57. So, Rakowski's got to know, like, I can't afford too many nine spares here. Well, Cause, yeah, cause you know, Tom is sharp. Well, he, he's definitely sharp with that pitch black in his hand. And I don't know if I've ever seen Tommy play as straight through the front part of the lane and down the lane as he is playing today. I mean, he's like right on top of 9-10. And so the only thing I think maybe going against Tom here is that through four events, we've had four first-time winners. And well, Rakowski yeah. looking to become number five. Right. So and we could have another first-time winner tonight. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the good juju has kind of been favoring that first-time winner here this year, and Rakowski would have no trouble keeping that trend going. You watch John's game, and it's just – it literally looks effortless. The swing, the approach, it's just ho-hum. <laughs> this 40 feet in length oil pattern, the Monticelli pattern, the legend pattern, at multiple angles of attack. We see Rakowski's playing like around the 15th board at the arrows, getting it out to about the 10th board, which is the right tracer or range finder. And then, of course, you've got the look up the boards with urethane or bowling balls that are more controllable. You take a look at the pattern right there. Wouldn't you think, I mean, I kind of compared this pattern to, say, the 39-foot pattern. You kind of do the math and the volume. You think, well, this pattern is going to play up 8, 9, 10. The guys are going to be way right. And in qualifying, there wasn't hardly anybody right. They were swinging fourth arrow. And today, they're playing farther to the right. Tommy is posting shots. He is mm -hmm. looking good. <laughs> yeah, he sure is. You can tell that I mean, th th that boy always has a fire in his belly. He is <laughs> he's animated. He wants it, and, and he talks the game. Tom in qualifying averaged. 230.25 to get here was the number four seed in the bracket, plus 242. He averaged 240 to get here, and he's averaging 250 today. 
and John Rakowski. He was the number six seed. Bowled 224 over, which was a 228 average. So Tommy composite average between qualifying and today is about 246. <laughs> not a bad day at the office. No, not at all. And he's he's continuing that trend right here with the front four. Best two out of three. Kind of a unique format getting here. This morning was three out of five. Then went to, I thought they would be. We used to do brackets years ago, and it started out three out of five, and then it was two out of three, two out of three, and the title match was always just a one game match. But now they've changed that to best of three. I like it, by the way, because a little bit longer time frame. You can't get beat by a Brooklyn or or, or just like an off hit or something like that. Sometimes Correct. when ten percent of the game is just one lucky break, that's that's a big percentage. You do it like this. It kind of plays out a little more true, gives everybody a fair fair chance at it. Well, and we're seeing players have to make ball changes, hand position changes, speed changes. You know, it's not, not just one game fire and go. You, you you know, you have to, it's a chess match here in these three game matches. And it does test the versatility. You're absolutely right, Craig. The only thing that uh, might make it a little bit better, my goodness, he's got the front five. Tommy's got the front four. It's a slugfest, and I know we can't do it because of. Of the TV, but don't you dare say it. Five games a match. No, I was, gonna say, I was going to say move pairs. <laughs> no, no, we're going to we're going to buy you a, a case of gap tape if that's the case, Tom <laughs> Carter. <laughs> <laughs> just you know, just throwing that out there. Well, thanks for your time on Bowl TV, Tom. We'll see you next season. You know what else I think would be a good idea is all, all the people out there in mobile homes, you know, the, the, the RVs, if you guys actually moved opposite sides of the parking lot every night. There you How about go. that one for you? There you go. Hess looking over the front five to match Rakoski. Oh. Some footwork issues. Yeah, yeah. a little okay, bit of a good. stick stop, hop and a bounce, but he got it. So you, you don't like the... Moving pair idea at all? Not a bit. That's uh, that's not even in, uh, in your, Man. not even close to your top ten it's, best it's ideas. A, folks at home, it's a good thing you can't see it because I'm in the middle of these two, mm -hmm. and I just got stared through, <laughs> like no chance. <laughs> Rotate the tires on that thing too every day. How about that? Well, here's the thing with Hess, right? So we saw in the last match at the end, his his hand was starting to kind of clam up, right? And, and he was dealing with some moisture or perspiration on his hand, and he wasn't quite getting through it the way that he wanted. And I think it's getting a little humid in here. It is. Uh, and it just rained outside, so. You're right that that is the deal. I'm glad you connected all that together. So because there is the rain, I think it, it could play with him a little bit. We just saw him stick a little bit there. It is some of that to throw on the urethane if you because of the oil sticks on the sure. shell of the urethane moisture. If you get a little bit on your hand, it's yeah. tough to get that moisture off. Well, there's definitely more urethane uh, oil conditioner on the surface of a urethane ball than reactive. Reactive it tends to kind of soak in a little bit, a little faster. Tom does have a nice big fan he carries with him from pair to pair to keep mm -hmm. the hand nice and dry. A little high, yeah, I can't get the nine. He did trip the yeah. four earlier on this lane. So he has he has now gone high high pocket twice on the left lane, just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind, and that's the tighter of the two. Remember, Tom is uh, Tom is laser focused. He just said, "I'm not going to miss that like I did yesterday." He remembers. He he can tell you what he bowled, what day, what block, what game, what frame, what ball he was using, and how it happened every single time. It's unbelievable. It, yeah, I don't know how you remember all that. Yeah. Some of us try to forget what happened the day before. I, I think Sue can probably tell us most of the information as well. Yeah. Johnny looks like he's like just 11, 12 out to eight. He's well, just, he, he had this first game against Angelo too, and then that pair just just it, got it, ugly. Yeah, and I had talked to Jeff earlier, and I said, just remember in the second game, things the transition starts happening. He might have to go to that different ball, uh, but this is the same scenario for the most part. Brad played the same part of the lane as, as he's playing. They're kind of on top of each other, so. You would think after 
a few more shots, the carry down or the back ends might actually tighten up. I think the one difference, though, with Hess is when he's in urethane, he's playing much more parallel. He, he's not covering as many boards, so the carry down is less extreme. And I think Wachowski is going to get a little bit of a hold. Like that shot there held pocket. A little hold there. You thought he missed that. And and I think if he gets it further to the to the right, Hess isn't quite as far right as his break point, so he may not even be affected. Mm -hmm. Hess might actually be helping Rakowski in this match. And we talked about it on the open. We talked about if both players hit the pocket every single time, reactive resin usually is going to outstrike a urethane bowling ball. Thus far, right now through seven frames or six and a half frames, I should say, players are perfect. But Hess left the one nine pin on the left lane. There's Amleto Monticelli. Amleto is the... He uh, looks way better in person than that picture. He is He is the <laughs> legendary pattern here named after him, talking with tournament director John Weber. Tommy back on course. Yeah, and you notice, you notice where that ball's going up the lane. It's, it, he's not swinging no, the he's, reactive ball. It's what, a, maybe two boards. That's what I said earlier. He, he's like... Crossing 10, taking it to 8. I mean, he's keeping his lines right in front of him. And for a guy that likes to hook the ball, I mean, that's pretty impressive because he, most of the time when we see Tom on the show, he's always giving the ball away a little bit, you know, and he's hooking the ball, and he can hook it from coast to coast. But the seam actually squared up this tight, it's pretty impressive. Well, if you're going to be successful out here, you're going to have to have a lot of tricks in the bag. Wrist positions, loft, speed. That was a beautiful shot there. I mean, he has looked like, a, unless something happens, a solid 279. I just keep an eye on his follow through, though. Sometimes he gets that little kind of little push to the right. Well, see where the hand goes here? Oh, that was a little, little straight through. That yeah. I thought. I thought he kind of shoved that one off to the right. So he was, he was up the back. Of that one pretty good. But down until the ball hits the pins, uh, and you know Tom is a, is a big guy, and it's hard for big guys to stay down and through the shot. But that's something that Hess has always done a great job of, and has gotten even better with age. It, well, it's dead perfect right now. Oh, that's got and a that's, push. That's, that's in. Oh, he trips the four, four pin. again, back-to-back -back trip force. And again, I think, you the, know, first of all. The urethane's kind of helping out. Yeah, and I think the fact that, that you know, John, he looks like he even got around that one a little bit, but they're they're starting to set up beautifully for John Rakowski here tonight because that one there, that, that did not get right. That was up the lane. But I mean, that almost looked like it went right through the face. Yeah, trip four. We got a hell of a final here, guys. This one here, this is a good one. And they were, this pattern has not been easy. Well, in qualifying, it wasn't this easy. I mean, obviously, Tommy made it look pretty easy. But for the most part, a, a lot of guys struggled on this pattern. It's in again. That was in even more. Yeah, that's three shots. No, he's missed left. That almost looked like he missed it at the bottom of the way. It just kind of banged on the lane. I heard it back here. That he just got out of it quick. Tom, do you think these are all bad shots, or is he hanging up? That's, I mean, that's three in a row that are left. Early hook? Or I think just, it's just early game. hook. He he likes to keep everything in front of him, too. Now he's going to have to make a move, obviously, to do something. Get a little left, give it a little room if he's going to stay in that. I mean, he does make but, a spare. It's 276, 279 max score. So, he's, he's, I mean, he got away with a couple, a couple trip forwards and struck. Yeah. But 10th frame, he's not going to be able to, to yank one and, and get a break cause if, if he even gets an opportunity. Tom can shut him all right here. Well, he's so close, it's almost hard to experiment to find out if you want to do something because you don't want to give up any pins. Typically, but, typically, guys, when, when it's a targeting issue, a lot of times that's timing, something mechanical on the way to the line. And I don't know if this was, is the most pressure that John has ever seen in, in his career ever, but when he's sitting on the, on the front eight here, after tripping a four pin, you know, it could have been a timing issue as well. He just needs to get back to in, in rhythm and hit what he's looking at. It's got a hook. It, that's, he pushed that a little bit to the right. Well, and, you know, we've talked to Rakowski's won some big events. He's got a USBC ego, but this has got to be the most pressure. This is for a PBA title. I mean, he yeah. hasn't been in this position before. 
Tommy got that, and we've been talking about how well he's been staying right on top of the shot. That one he pushed a little bit to the right, and there's a, there is a hang spot on this pattern if you get it too far right. It doesn't bounce like last night's pattern did when you get it out to, like, one, two, three. But his hand was off to the right, though, on follow-through there, too. He didn't, didn't stab the back of it. He knew it wasn't good off his hand. Oh, Aaron shot, didn't pick up the washout. 211 in the ninth, possible 241. And Rakowski, all he has to do now is just show up in the 10th. Yeah, he's got 236 already, so that would be, uh, he would need three pins on the first ball. So Rakowski's going to get this one. I, I'm going to give you, I'm going to, this is my lock of the day. <laughs> like his chances uh, of getting this, three. Yeah, I'm going to think he's yeah. going to get three on the first ball. What if he gutters that first ball? You like his chances of getting three? Oh, I need, he would need six, six on the second he would ball. Need six, yeah. Yeah. I Don't still like his chances. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's probably not going to happen. Yeah, he doesn't need anything now. So what happened to Tom? I mean, he lost the, the one on the right line. It looked like he lost off his hand. This one, he, he grabbed it. So let's make sure I don't lose it. Yeah, I think he missed the one on the right lane, and then he came over on the left lane and wanted to make sure that he got a mitt full of that and, one. And he did. I go to the attorney again here just to see what he's got with, with reactive. Exactly. Yeah, he's He's got it probably. I think this is a good move. I think he's carried enough oil down that – he might be able to bounce off of a dry spot down lane. Well, he threw this at the end of the one game against Adcock, and it looked pretty darn good. Yeah, that motion there looks way better than – and it's more natural to his game. I think he threw all three in the 10th for that 260 game. But, again, he, he's thrown that ball today. He knows what it does. Where if Rakoski has a change, he's done nothing else but throw this ball. So he no. just doesn't have that – I mean, Tom had a really good idea where to throw it, and, and I think he likes what he saw. Well – Realistically, after John throws this one, he could throw that the other ball he has down there just to see what is going on, which hopefully he picks this up. It wouldn't be a bad idea to just give it a toss and see. You know, throw that water yeah. bottle at him and say, hey, yeah, I can, you, well, can you get it there? That would be kind mm. of a good idea. Yeah, I don't know. What? No, I'm not turning that, that shoulder. You no, know, <laughs> my arm doesn't go that way. I can't throw anything overhand. Barely throw anything under. <laughs> yeah, we're talking like he bowled a horrible game. He's just shooting 260. But again, th th there's been you know trip four, trip four, right. and then that six count. Yeah. So the last you know the last three, three. shots before that were well, not that, the greatest. And that shot wasn't the purest one he's ever made. And he still didn't throw the other ball. And we can also go back to our history of the last game against against uh, Brad Angelo. Where, you know, Rakowski shoots 267, and then you know. Only had a couple doubles. He, you know, it's tough to even strike that next one. 193 winner because Brad had nothing either. So, I mean, he was kind of fortunate to win that game and even be in this position. So, nice 265. 265 to 218. Best two out of three. Awesome game there by uh, Rakowski. I mean, what a way to show up here and come out and bowl a phenomenal first game. He's lined mm -hmm. up on this pair, and uh, he takes game number one. So, Tommy changing balls. Is he? N no. No, nope, it's still in the rack. No, he's not going to. He's, are you kidding me? He's averaged 260 with, with reactive. No, with, he, with your, with your thing. I'm with sorry. Your, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. With your thing. We, we won't switch to reactive. So he'll, I mean, he, he really technically made one bad shot. I know the one in the 10th went through the face, but he's, he's going to ride this out. There's no reason to switch right now. Unless this one doesn't go through the pins right. Okay, he moved in just a hair on that. He he yeah. might he might have moved his feet one left maybe. So, so why, yeah, even, why even throw in the tenth? That's why it looked oh, like oh, just, just just I mean just for info. If 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 he goes solid ten, solid ten, light shaker seven, and maybe like a seven yeah. ten. Yeah, that was. Well, like, then he doesn't have to go blind with the reactive okay. ball. So it, that was like a two board move. He went tw uh, twelve to ten instead of ten to eight. So he just moved into a little bit more of that puddle. And he probably created some more holes down there. More aggressive for Rakowski there. He got that one out. 
he got the light mixer there. I got to tell you, I'm really li I'm liking how he is truly taking advantage of modern day bowling balls, right? I yeah. mean, he's and that's the better shot for him. Hit is, him, is hit him mixer. thin, watch him spin. And right? He went 7 10, 7 10, 9 pin in that game, in that match against Angelo. So the, the light mixers are but, his friend. And he stays right probably longer than anybody, even when the shot is going left. I mean, John Campley farther left, but his comfort zone is right where he's at now. His tempo to the line is so nonchalant, just ho-hum. Yeah, and I, I like what he's done here on these two shots because we saw that towards the end of the game, the little hiccups there, that he got a little case of the tug of ruse there. Now he's very comfortable floating it left to right, giving a little bit of belly, comes off the end of the pattern. Yeah, and he, he's Perfect. moved in, and he's like 12 to 10. He's right yeah, he's on top of where right Tommy's at. Right on top of Tom. Well, we talked about two angles. You can do 15 to 10-ish, 12 to 10, depending on your rev rate. You could also get right of it for a while. Both players are kind of playing in what we call the tube or the track right now. He absolutely hated oh, that Oh, he shot. hated that and then got the break. Yeah, well... He's, you, we heard him yell lay there earlier, and, and it did. And this ball, when he does this, does lay there. Oh, this was, oh, Tom on this one. Though. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, right. it was not lay there. It was his oh, help. Give me a lifeline. Phone a friend. The thing is, though, when, when, when Tom has a tendency to tug the bowling ball, he does not overhit it at the bottom. If anything, he, he gets less on it, maybe gets around it a little bit which delays hook and keeps it right yep. on line. Getting around it creates a little bit more skid. But that also brings those 10 pins into play, right, with your urethane especially? Oh, it could, yeah. I think guys that throw urethane tend to kind of bang on it a little bit more. I, you know, watching... Uh, Dan Knowlton last night. I mean, he was getting a handful of that urethane ball to make it snap up. And I think, you know, Tommy and then Tommy Adcock throwing urethane, Brad Angelo, I, it's not like they just try to float it down the lane. They're getting a handful of it. And that shot for Hess, he never got it right down lane. Never got close to that 10 board at that rangefinder at 40 some feet. What are these, 42 feet rangefinders on this? Down lane? Yeah. That's 42, 43. I think the the first set are right on 40 at the front, I think very so, front right edge. At the end of the pattern. And they're, what, two foot long, I believe. Mm -hmm. I didn't learn until a couple of years ago that depending on the type of surface, those range finders are in different spots. <laughs> you got to know that going in if you're targeting that spot. Have you ever seen those range finders? On wood lanes? Well, I can't see that far to begin with, so I haven't seen any of them. I, <laughs> I've seen people install them on wood lanes. Oh, yeah. Rukowski just, look, hey, I'm, I'm hey, just got another strike. Here I am. Again, you, you don't know if he struck or if he fouled or if he, he just throws the ball, turns around, comes back. Well, he's had 300 in this pattern today. He's had a 279. He's had a 267 and a 265. He's, he also had another 300 and 299 this week, so he's, he's not afraid to strike. There's no doubt about it. He's had two 300s this week yeah. and a 299. Now, he can strike. He took way more time in the approach to that shot. Way more time, and that's and that, usually what yeah. happens. It goes left when that happens. You stand there too long. Study wrong. You, st you study long, you study wrong. <laughs> Shaking his head. He didn't like that shot at all. I mean, no, and I, I agree with him. Yeah, yeah he's, 100%. he's like, no, that wasn't good. Yeah, we concur. You know, uh, we, we sit here and, and we nitpick and we look at every little thing possible, every time they miss or, or whatever. But But right now, 
it's it's just fractions out there. I mean, he was getting that one going a little left to right, and it just jumped there. We've seen both players leave a 6-10 on the left lane, okay? And it, I believe that lane, some way, somehow, somewhere, is starting to create more hook for the guys a little bit earlier. I mean, well, they both got it in at the arrows, and it just never floated right yeah, at all. That, yeah, I mean, that it was, ball it was 11 to 10 and a half as opposed to that, you yeah. know. 10 to 8. He was like 12 to 10, and that never got to 10, I don't think, down no, lane. No. But, you know, you, you watch his technique as he releases it. There's a lot of spine tilt, and he, he actually drifts a couple boards to the right. So you got body going to the right, and if your swing doesn't stay on line, you're going to probably pull it back. Your body doesn't want, really want to fall down. He likes that. Oh, wow. Ooh. Okay. That was he, almost he, five. He liked it, but that ball just went skating by the five and just uh, just waved as it went past. If he throws that shot on the left lane, it's a strike. Hey, he's got early hook. But this this hit 10 to almost seven. Well, he might have thrown that. Uh, I haven't been looking at the speeds. He might have thrown that a little harder because if you look on the replay, when he got the line, he was up on his toes. He. He really raised on that one. He's been around 16 and a half. That was 16.6. So just a, just a touch touch quicker. We got two more events yet to do to Petraglia tomorrow. Petraglia tomorrow. The World Championship advances around starting Saturday in their stepladder final for the major third major of the season at on Sunday, six o'clock, I believe. Yeah, much better shot on that left lane. Tommy said something to himself on the way back. I didn't quite catch it. I think he said, I like that shot, it, something like that. Yeah, see, that one got out the 10 down lane. He, he give it just that little bit. Yeah, there's no deflection there going through the pins. Well, let's try here, and we're pretty much even through five frames. Rakowski up 1-0 in his best of five. Win two matches. You win the title. It, I, I know he's striking, but most of those shots just look like he's light splattering pins around. It's not like he's blowing them off the deck. He's just kind of like mixing them up. I was just going to say, I, I, I just <laughs> love this kind of old school Half pocket hit, hit striking, <laughs> and, I mean, and doing it with a, with an old teal rhino pro yeah, as well, right? I mean, it's a new one, but it's still you know the it, nostalgia it of it. Feels like 1994 ish. Well, he's got know. a classic 1990 style. I know. <laughs> That was more aggressive, way more aggressive. Oh, oh. Slaps the six off Sla the wall into the ten there. Oh, so he knows this lane was hooked a little more, right? So he just juiced it a little bit extra. Couple yeah, of good he, shots. He, he, yeah, he looked back at the speed on that one, too. Yeah, yeah, 16, 19. Yeah, that was definitely probably half mile an hour quicker on that lane. Look at where it goes to check early and then just blends out it, at that, the end. That's kind of scary. You see it hit the one three. It, it clipped the five, but it did fall know, back into know, the eight. <laughs> You know, ideally, you kind of want that ball split in the 8-9 going the other way. We're not seeing much of that right now, especially where Casca, that light mixer is his friend, even the, even the little bit slush mixer. Well, you as a bowler, you see your balls kind of deflecting to the right. You, what kind of move do you make on that? Or do you make a move, even uh, though you struck? It depends on the bowling center and how I've been carrying all week. That was almost a five pin last time on that lane. And now he left five seven. Yeah, he made a, a great shot there. Let's see if he comes out of his. No, he stayed he stayed down with that. Wow, that ball it, that almost ball went right of the nine pin. That yeah. really deflected. That's back to back shots on that lane. Just an unfortunate break here. Um, I believe the move is five and three left to pick this. 
That's what you're going with, five and three. I believe five and three is is what's written up in the book. Yeah, on how you pick this. According to Hoyle. According to Carolyn Doran Ballard. I would say, is that a Bill Taylor thing? She was automatic <laughs> at this spare. Nice shot. I'll tell you, Tom, Tom's a hell of a spare shooter. Uh, splits, yeah. especially. Two tens, five sevens. Oh, he's deadly on a two ten. He's, he's, he's unbelievable at it. He was only five for five yesterday in match play hey, on the two ten combos. He... He makes that spare look like it's nothing. I know. And this can get in your head a little bit if you're looking for your first title, if you're Rakowski, because you think, oh, wow, all right, here we go. Game I just got on. a break. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, open frame. Well, not so fast. You see the guys, especially Tommy, really wiping those urethane balls, getting all that oil off of it so it gets the traction it needs. Otherwise, that oil just sits on the outside. You don't need any extra skid on that ball. No, not at all. <laughs> he got that one oh. right at the arrows. That was right of second arrow. So if John comes back up and throws two more, when Tommy comes back up, does he make that move to the reactive? No. No? No, I don't think so. I know I know you're dying for it. <laughs> I well again. Yeah. As much as I was yelling at Brad in the last match that he should be out of your <laughs> thing, I, I just think that, that, that Tom's strike percentage isn't ten percent like Brad's was. Ooh. Now let's all put ourselves in Koski's shoes right here. You've uh, been wanting to achieve something like this your entire life. You've won the tat twice. You've had this, this decorated amateur career, right? However, right now, you basically have a couple frames in front of you here where you can set yourself up real nice to win your first ever title, be eligible for the Tournament of Champions. Correct. This is the most amount of pressure you could put on someone right here. This is going to tell me what John Rakowski's made about right here, what he's made of the next two shots. I think if he gets up there and goes, don't take too much time on this shot. That was quality. There's one or two. And just for record, if I have to put myself in his shoes, he's going to have to get some bigger shoes. <laughs> John, I, the one thing about him, and, in, and you're in this situation, again, to win your first title. The nerves got to be going. The adrenaline's got to be going. He has, and it looks like has the ability to stay cool, calm, and collected. He doesn't look like he gets even remotely pumped when something happens. Yeah, the only emotion we kind of saw from him is he got a little sheepish in the last match where he got away with the tug and it carried. He looked back at his, his, his buddy here and with, with a little grin. That's the only, only thing we've seen. Seems like all week as far as facial expression changes from Rakowski. <laughs> How about those uh, two shots? Okay, huh? that How was the, that? the most excitement I've seen was the double fist pump. Might have He's been the, might have been the best shot we've seen him throw on a pair, yeah. and and that that basically right there just told me what this man's made of. He's got ice in his veins. Look at this guy. <laughs> And watch how it finishes through the pins. I mean, those pins had no chance. Yeah, see that ball kept going through the pins. He has put Tommy in a must situation. Yep, 245 the max now for Tom House, 278 the max for Mr. Rakowski. Tom's going to slow it down a little bit on this right lane. He didn't like that no. at all. No. And he got away with it. The two he didn't <clears throat> like struck on this lane. The two he really thought, that, especially the last one, Kelly Kula came and said good shot at 510. So, I, I don't know. I mean, both shots he didn't like struck. He trips a four, but he did strike. So he doesn't like it. He strikes. He throws it good. He doesn't strike. So, <laughs> yeah. what kind of mind frame That's, does that put I think you he in? Go, he needs that Dino Castillo method of hating every shot. Yeah, and, yeah, and just you, throw your hands up and you strike all day long. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not surprised at re-rack here. You know, one, it slows Tom down, but also slows Rakowski down, makes him sit there and think about it a little bit longer before he gets to bowl his ninth and tenth frame. He might even take a second re-rack here. This, this is, this is not over. 
This, this match is not over. It has, still has 245 out there. But he has he to win. Remember, he's down 1-0. He has to win this game. Yeah, otherwise it's all over. And this is kind of a must situation here. Tommy needs this one. This is the lane where the bowling ball picks up a little bit sooner. We've seen him trip a four pin. We've seen him leave a nine pin. We've seen him go through the face. That looked like a good shot off his hand. He's backing it out and leaves the four, four pin. pin. That was a good that, shot. I think we all now, agree on that. Best he can do is 225. And you see Tom's not too upset about the shot either because he can't be mad at himself because he did exactly what he wanted to do. Yeah, he, he, that looks good. I mean, even on the replay here, and we're looking at it, that looked perfect. <laughs> 226 would be the magic number now for Rakowski. Well, Tom finished in the 3-4 yesterday on the Ballard. He's going to have at least a second-place finish here on the Monticelli, and he's bowling again tomorrow in the third of these legend patterns. So you got to like his chances. He's bowling well right now. He just needs to figure out how to extend it and, and maybe get a W here. He needs some help from Rakowski if he's going to do it today. Strike here will pretty well do it. And my mixer. Did. There's that half pocket mixer. I thought I could stop the first time winner. <laughs> That'll be the fifth first time winner that we have. Oh, and <clears throat> third guy from Florida now, so out of five. So there's something in the water down yeah. there. Johnny Tat Tat with his first PBA 50 title. And not yet. Now you do it. <laughs> Both bowlers bowled tremendous here tonight. Tom Hess ran into some uh, carry issues. And uh, Tommy just trying to get out of the way to finish this. Oh, no, look at that. <laughs> yeah. And he's got a really good attitude here tonight, too. This is the most lighthearted I've ever, I think I've ever seen, Tommy. Yeah, this is the happiest losing Tom <laughs> Hess we may have ever seen. But it's because he, he, he executed. He bowled, he bowled well. Yeah, but you would think a guy that actually averaged 250 for the day, you wouldn't think that he was going to lose this match. 215 for Tommy Hess. John Rakowski, if he strikes here, 256. And his first PBA title, and he was wondering if he was good enough to even come out here. And I think he has answered that question. John Rakowski, Johnny Tat Tat. First PBA 50 title. Yeah, he's smiling from ear to ear. He's totally, totally, I think, elated in his own way. And Amaletto Monticelli is going to be here, and I believe to help. All right, John, come on back. Trophy. <laughs> so our string of first-time champions continue five in a row, but also this is the third player from Florida to win this year in five events. Must be something to wow down there. Congratulations, John Rakowski. Thank you. You made your first show last year down in Florida, uh, the one event you bowled, 267. It wasn't enough to win that one. You come in here, though, and through a lot of strikes, you're getting that first win. What's it mean to you today? Um, it's kind of unbelievable right now. Um, I, didn't, I didn't think this would happen, but I'm very excited. <laughs> so you got a lot of friends, family, and sponsors you want to thank. You want to give a shout-out to anybody special here today? Yeah, uh, Brunswick, uh, Turbo, Coolwick. Thank you for everything. Um, I had a good friend, Donnie Schwartz, fly in, so it was good. My well, wife will be here tomorrow. So, Well, maybe you can yeah. win, uh, win the world championship for her. 
Maybe tomorrow, too. <laughs> Tom's got something to say about that. How about Tom Hess this week? Third and fourth yesterday, second today. Great start to the World Series of Bowling. John, we've got something special for you here. We've got another guy I think you probably met before in Florida, but I'm Lodo Monticelli to come out here and give you this trophy. And Leto, this is the Monticelli pattern, so you get to award John the trophy. What's it mean to you to have a pattern here, one of the legend patterns named after you? Well, first of all, I want to congratulate John. He's been bowling great. Uh, he's a great bowler. And actually, um, since he lives in Florida, we, we, we need to get together and you can teach me how to play this pattern because I couldn't figure it out. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's great. I mean, to have a pattern designed by, for me, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's an honor. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have any input how to design it. So, but uh, it's great. Thank you. Maybe we can get you Smith on next year to help you help you strike a little more on this. Oh yes, definitely. That's why I'm telling him we gotta get together. All right. <laughs> now, a new doubles team out of Florida too. They're gonna be tough to beat. <laughs> Congratulations, John.